Summary of My Oedipus Complex by Frank O'Connor In the story My Oedipus Complex, Larry thinks back on things that happened throughout his childhood. As a soldier in World War I, Larry's dad is rarely at home, so his five-year-old son Larry doesn't know him very well. During his father's long trips away, Larry gets into the habit of getting up with the son, talking to his feet, whom he names Mrs. Left and Mrs. Right, and climbing into his mother's bed. Larry and his mother enjoy their days by running chores and going to church, where they pray for Larry's father's safe return. Larry wakes up one day to find that his father has come back for good. But when Larry sees his father out of uniform, he doesn't like him as much. The next day, Larry's dad does as his wife asks and takes Larry for a walk around town. Larry has a few quiet temper tantrums when his father doesn't stop to look at trains and horses, but instead goes after his own hobbies. That night, Larry's dad tells his mom stories from the newspaper, which makes Larry feel like his dad is being sneaky by getting interesting things to talk about from other places. That night, Larry asks his mother if he can pray to God to send his dad back to war. Larry's mother tells him that God won't accept this prayer because wars are started by bad people, not by God. Larry goes to bed sad, thinking that maybe God isn't as important as everyone says he is. Larry goes to his folks' bed the next morning. He kicks his father to make room for himself because he can't stand how much space his father takes up. Larry is upset when his mother stops talking to him so she doesn't wake up his father. He starts to think that he and his father can't live together. That night, Larry's mother tells him not to wake up his father early the next morning. She tells Larry's father that he needs to have enough energy to work since he can no longer get an army salary. Larry agrees reluctantly, but in the end he goes back to his parents' bed and wakes up his dad by kicking him. After Larry throws a fit and talks back to his father, he gets a half-hearted beating that makes Larry furious and his mother sad. At his wit's end, Larry gives his father the final blow by telling his parents that he wants to marry his mother and have many children with her. Larry's mother tells him that they are going to have a baby soon. Larry likes having a baby much less than he thought he would. Larry tries to let his father know how annoyed he is with Sonny's constant crying and need for attention by trying to talk to himself and threatening to leave the house if they have another baby. Larry sees that his father has started to be nice to him. Larry feels sorry for his father and can understand what he is going through because he has been there himself. One night, Larry wakes up because his father is lying next to him in bed, trying to get away from Sonny's cries. Larry tries to make his father feel better by telling him to put his arm around him. Soon after that, for Christmas, his father gives him a model railroad. About the author Frank O'Connor was born and reared in the city of Cork in Ireland, where he also received his primary and secondary education. The pseudonym Michael Francis O'Donovan used throughout his life was Frank O'Connor. Michael and Minnie O'Donovan had a rough home life, and O'Connor was their only child. Michael O'Donovan Sr. used to be in the army, but his serious drinking made it impossible for him to keep a job after he left. Even though O'Connor was angry with his father, he was close to his mother, who took care of Frank and cleaned houses to help support the family. Before joining the Irish Republican Army in 1918, O'Connor worked as a librarian. Between 1922 and 1923, he was locked up for being a member of the Irish Republican Army. When O'Connor got out of prison, he became something of a renaissance man. O'Connor was an Irish teacher and librarian, and he also worked as a reporter for the Ministry of Information in the UK during World War II. He was also on the board of directors for the Abbey Theatre. After releasing several works, including his short story Guests of the Nation in 1931, O'Connor became known as a writer. After he and his first wife, Welsh actor Evelyn Bowen, broke up, O'Connor took teaching jobs at Northwestern, where he met his second wife, Harriet Rich, and Harvard in the United States. While O'Connor was living in the U.S., he became known for his short stories, many of which were published in The New Yorker. In 1961, O'Connor went back to Ireland after having a stroke while he was teaching at Stanford University. After a year, Trinity College in Dublin gave him a Doctor of Letters. He died of a heart attack in Dublin on March 10, 1966. 
Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.